grew up in New Jersey, which is the Garden State. Um, I grew up uh, trapping muskrat and hunting rabbit with a bow and arrow, and it was um, very rural where I grew up. I guess as a kid I had um, an interest in the darkroom, and my subjects would be uh, wildlife. I, we had a lot of chipmunks in the backyard. I would be on my stomach trying to get up close to a chipmunk or a lizard. And I enjoyed uh, learning how to develop film. We had a one bathroom house that I grew up in and I would lock the door and my sister and mom and dad couldn't get in while I developed the film. ended up going to New York Institute of Photography and, and I really liked um, commercial photography and after finishing I got a job working for a large studio in New York. It was a, a great experience. We used an 8x10 view camera to photograph fashion for Montgomery Wards and J.C. Penney's, the major catalogs. Um, that would be shipped out to everybody. Um, we did all the uh, fashion shoots for that. I moved to Miami, Florida um, years later and I started working for a um, studio down there that did primarily product photography. So I really enjoyed the process of having control over every aspect of the photograph. Um, the position of, we did a lot of jewelry, so the position of the chains and the rings and the bracelets, you know, and, and we controlled the lighting, the exposure, the focus, um, everything was um, controlled and um, that, that really appealed to me. After that experience in Florida, we moved here the end of 1981 and I started my own business here. And over the years, I became very attracted to photographing architecture for some reason. I have no um, background in architecture. I never studied it, just attracted to um, buildings. So I would photograph buildings on speculation and I would bring them to the architect's firm and show them what I photographed and they would purchase them from me. I just had a natural understanding of the proper composition in the room and how to light it, how to make it look alive, and um, became very good at it. So um, that was primarily my career in photography. Paid the bills. I probably started doing landscape work ten years ago, maybe nine years ago, and um, was able to sell some images. Then I just became serious and um, getting familiar with the different um, arts council and Kentucky Crafted. And it's, um, you know, being accepted into Kentucky Crafted is, uh, I guess, prestigious, but um, it opens doors for other venues and because I was at Kentucky Crafted, Acclaim Press saw my work, and um, out of that came my book, Quiet Places. So it's been it's been a good experience. Well, I started doing these barn photographs. That's reclaimed barn wood. You know the the beams out there, and the flooring here is reclaimed barn wood. And, um, I've built a. 150 foot stone wall across the back of our property. Those are things that um, are of interest to me and they come across in my photographs. Um, it's like the whole picture, you know. I love this. I take pictures of that, you know. I take pictures of what I love. Edward Weston 
who is a, a famous um, still life photographer, he said, to consult the rules of composition before making a picture is a little like consulting the law of gravitation before going for a walk. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and so, you know, there's rules of thirds and there is leading lines. I guess I knew about leading lines early on, but um, I had forgotten all about it, yet my photographs have that aspect to them, but it's, I never even thought about it when I was taking pictures. So I just have to figure out where the camera should be to, to have it um, look pleasing. In landscapes, you don't have, you know, sometimes the best angle is you'd be off the cliff. You know, so there's compromises that have to be made that waterfall picture, uh, literally leaning over the edge of a 120-foot ledge, and I didn't have much room to uh, negotiate there. So you end up uh, sometimes in precarious positions, and you just have to settle. There's so many photographers that are selling pictures of the Red River Gorge area that... I decided to offer something different, and so I, a lot of my subject matter is the Big South Fork. This uh, snow scene up here was, was kind of fun because we hadn't had snow all year, and there was a forecast that there would be snow south of here. So I got a, a friend, and we, we headed south. I, I used my trusty uh, hiking the Big South Fork, and we got on the trail, and it's three miles down. And as we got down to the river, it uh, started to it was it started raining, and then it switched over to snow, and we got wet, and we were freezing, and it was snowing like crazy. And that was the last picture I had taken before we had to hike three miles back up. I'm convinced I got hypothermia because I was just trembling. And uh, we got out of there only to find out that there was a parking lot a half a mile away from there. And we could have just driven <laughs> to the water's edge. But I like that picture a lot more because of the effort that it took to get it. Another quote from George Eastman, Eastman Kodak. He says, light makes photography. Embrace light, admire it, love it, but above all, know light. Know it for all you are worth, and you will know the key to photography. I'm constantly observing light. You know, I, I study it whether I'm taking pictures or not. I'm just drawn to light. Yep, thinking about it and putting myself out there to, um, to respond to it. And when you look at the photograph, it's, uh, you shouldn't be looking at the lighting. You should just see it. It should be pleasing and, and just a, a great experience looking at it. it. Shouldn't interfere with the pleasure of viewing it. I was looking at this picture when I hung it and um, it's also the cover of my book. When you first look at the image, you know, you see, obviously, you see the falls, and, um, and then you start looking into the forest, and, you know, it, it was a foggy morning, so the fog reduces the contrast, so you start, you know, your eye starts wandering back in there, and you just feel primitive. But then the thing that... Um, you see, you start to see is um, as your eye adjusts, you know, that isn't just black. There is, um, there's a boulder here and a boulder there and a dark line going between the two. So your eye starts to see into the shadows. You see into the base of that tree trunk that it's not just a blob, but there is actually detail there. There's a few areas like way back in there that it does go almost black 
but um, I always try to give your eyes something to continually see, you know, whether you spend time looking at it on your first visit to it or whether you just keep coming back. It's always nice to say, oh, I didn't see that before. And it's uh, just, it keeps giving. So that I strive for that. You know, it's a lot of staring, a lot of looking, and it just becomes a part of you. I think photography is a lifelong pursuit. You know, I've been doing it for 45 years and um, still have lots and lots to learn. You never, you just never uh, stop learning. If you're not looking for beauty, you probably don't see it. But if you start getting a mentality of, well, you know, what is, what's around me? And, oh, look at that, I never saw that before. And so you start putting two and two together and it, it becomes just a part of you.